Ladies and gents, bienvenido a todos. Um, this is a very special episode of the Tahona Society Welfare Talks. And today I'm having with me no other than Jesus Hernandez Senior and his son Jesus as well. Uh, my name is Simon Kissenfeger. And as many of you guys say, El Vikingo. And I have the pleasure of, <laughs> <laughs> of representing Altos as the global brand ambassador. So guys, how are you? It's very good to see you as always. Good, man. Good, good. Doing well, Simon. It's great to see you. Yes. Good to see Even, you, man. How's, how are things going? Everything is uh, fantastic, truly. And I'm also very thankful for this opportunity to have with both of you on today. And yeah, again, thank you for taking your time. This is no, actually- thank you, man. This is really fun. This is actually the first time today I have to have a sip and raise a glass to you both, <laughs> legends. <laughs> nice, I knew it. And yeah, I'm sure they will follow a couple of sips today. Um, yeah. yeah, let's start. So the Tahona Society was created in the initiative of two bartenders, the late Henry Besson and Dre Masso, who also created with you, Jesus, Altos Tequila, which is the reason why we are all here today. And yeah. yeah, the Tahona Society spreads knowledge around like the industry, all things around <laughs> agave, and it has developed rapidly in the last years and has become hands down one of the most important ed educational platforms in our industry. And yeah, in the welfare, welfare series, we focus on topics which can be sometimes a little bit more rough in the industry. But it's also a very uh, proud initiative for me to work with because, yeah, it's also giving bartenders solutions how to help. And I'm gonna make you guys spill a couple of beans as well. Asus, you know, you know, or you both know actually that I like to do that when we have uh, <laughs> the, the distillery visits or whatsoever. Um, yeah. So, long story short, let's jump right into our session. So, yeah, we, so, we have a saying. Uh, like we, we have a saying like that age before beauty. Yeah. So I will I will start. <laughs> 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 I will start with Senor Hernandez. And yeah, I know you both are always in quite amazing shape. I must admit, but we came <laughs> come later on to that secret. But I have the first <laughs> question to you, Jesus, which is. Um, what do you have to do to become a master distiller? And what did you do to become the master distiller of Altos? <laughs> well, uh, in my case, uh, being involved in the manufacturing of spirits uh, for quite a few years uh, uh, before I started up uh, the distillery where we make Olmeca Altos, uh, I have been working with different spirits um, for about 16 years and uh, focusing on the area of quality, quality assurance and uh, specifically uh, tasting and comparison tastings. I learned from master blenders from Canada a few years back and been practicing. So when we started up our distillery, um, I had the uh, honor of putting together a team to make tequila and uh, we learned together. We went together through a lot of experimentations and uh, documenting everything we did so we could, we could do something when things went well. And uh, right. after a few years, uh, I, I got the honor of, of being uh, named the uh, master this time. Nice, nice. Master and, <laughs> and also with Altos, like, or let's say Altos with the help of you has set an example how to mindful create a tequila which, which has focused like on the environmental impact. And can you get us a couple of points? Like, we, we, I mean, we all know for the, for the listeners today, like the life uh, cycle of an agave is seven years. And you know, how did you measure and optimize this kind of uh, process, you know? Yeah. Um. Yeah, so one of the things, of course, that makes tequila unique is the raw material, the agave. And it takes a long time to cultivate it and have it ready for uh, harvest, seven years on average. Um, so being something 
special and unique. We have to honor that and make the best of it. So the way to honor that is uh, make our tequila uh, have this substance, uh, aromas and flavors being well represented. And everything that we do in the transformation process, we want to make sure we get the best benefit of that agave. And right. for that, of course, we use uh, all techniques, including the Taona process, fermenting and distilling with the fibers. This is the original way of making tequila dating back 500 years. And of course, uh, through this transformation process, also try to minimize the impact on the environment by uh, trying to uh, reduce the amount of energy that we uh, use to do the conversion. Uh, also reduce the amount of waste, including wastewater. And when there is waste, <clears throat> like the megas or the fibers, uh, do something with them that is useful. In our case, uh, we were composting for many years right there in the distillery. And now since we are surrounded by uh, very close neighbors, we've since moved this process to a third party, a little bit uh, more rural, but uh, it's still being composted. and. That makes a uh, run of fertilizer that goes back to the agave fields to close the cycle. It goes back to the soil. So yeah, that's something we are all really proud of. And I mean, there are a couple of other things we 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 do right, like the the we reduce the amount of the glass in the in the bottles. Um, yeah, a lot of things which I think is a really good example, and and it makes me also proud to work with with Altos Tequila. Um, yeah. We're always looking for ways of uh, minimizing that impact. And yeah, one of the last latest ones was uh, reducing the amount of glass in the bottle, which of course uh, translates to less energy for making the bottle itself, but also less energy to transport it. And of course, this bottle gets to different corners of the world, very far out. So of course, that is exactly. yeah. Yeah, like, like Germany, I, I got a bottle right here. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I mean, that's, I think we also have to transport to our, our guest. I have to do it, especially here in, in Europe, you know, where maybe the knowledge is not quite there yet, where we should be. And we have to also always consider the cultural value it brings with it when we have a glass of tequila. So yeah, also tequila represents Mexico, you know, and I think it's the most regulated spirit or one of the most regulated spirits in the world, right? So I'm really... Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to, to represent this culture. And I think you guys, you have it in your veins, but for us in Europe, you have to really educate the, the, the drinkers because for them, sometimes it's just this, the last shot in the night and it's, it's changing. Yeah. If you really talk to the, to the consumers, the trend is changing that it's getting really, um, I would call it sexy to have to sip it and really appreciate the, the long process. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah. as you, you already mentioned it, that as a master distiller, you need an, to have an immense amount of knowledge and experience, like from the sensorial, uh, so, sensorical art to chemistry to quality control. Um, you know, guys, I have to tell you, uh, I did the apprenticeship as an industry, industry mechanic. And I also have to tell you a secret. I have a small... A pot still, a very small pot still at home, where <laughs> where I actually distilled oh, yeah. lately. Yeah, I, I distilled lately some raspberry, um, yeah, last, uh, raspberry spirit. So I will bring it next time to Mexico wow. and let you guys try. <laughs> nice, yeah, we love to make it. Yeah, yeah. You were making gin last time you uh, you spoke about that, no? Exactly, exactly. That yeah, yeah. also started with this small thing. Now I have to distill it in in Austria because the. Um, the laws change that you can do it privately, uh, not with two liters, but you, we, I mean, it's close by, so I have some friends. <laughs> Germany, man. German yeah. engineering. So, <laughs> not, which not brings me to... Uh, not only a Viking, but moonshiner too, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's actually quite good. It's it's with a clean cut and a very nice spirit. <laughs> uh, what do you call, is there German moonshine? <laughs> I mean, for sure, there is some German yeah, moonshine. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, um, your plan must be really good, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we are really proud of it, and it's it's starting step by step. But you know, cool. uh, 
passing the mic to you, uh, to the to the new generation. You know, if you have to have a father who is so talented and famous around the world, um, I think the late Thomas Estes said that you are one of the leading lights in the whole industry that is very influential and which is so true in my opinion. So this brings me to this question, you know, how is it to be the son of the most or one of the most respected master distillers in the world? You know, how was it for yeah. you to have such a big, um, how should I say shadow, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's big shoes to fill. Um, you know, a lot of expectations, obviously on everything that, uh, that I do. As you and I met when uh, when I first started working with with Altos, it was it was a really good feeling to be a part of something that felt that I already belonged in. Because every time I got introduced to somebody or or I met somebody, uh, there was a good chance they had already met my father. Because I started only maybe seven years ago uh, right. in this industry, so he's been around for forty. Um, so obviously, he knows a lot more people than I do, and. Uh, and back then, when I first started, I knew nobody. So it was uh, it was always really nice to hear, obviously, what uh, so many people had so many good things to say about my father. And it was just, you know, it's always been uh, something that is a matter of, of a lot of pride. So, you know, you're not mad about it at, at all. It's uh, it's a really good thing and uh, really proud to have this guy as my dad. So it's, uh, you know, it's just uh, sometimes a lot of pressure also. You know, you got to, you got to. <laughs> Feel you gotta live shoes. up to the expectations, but yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, mostly really, really good. Nice, nice. And now I'm talking for my myself that I'm that I'm immensely proud of what you have started lately, um, which is your own bar. You know, it takes actually a lot of courage to step out of your position because you had an amazing position as well. You know, with yeah, representing Altos Tequila also and and doing a lot of stuff, but. Um, yeah, you know, a, a lot of yeah. viewers probably would dream of this job. And but you started like your own project in the heart of Guadalajara. And for me, Guadalajara is the pearl of Mexico, definitely. And yeah. <laughs> which I will raise another glass to you guys. But how <laughs> was it for you to break out and really start your own legacy? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, as you said, I was really lucky because I was put into this uh, really great position where I got to meet so many people and I got to travel and I got to do a lot of things that I love to do. Um, I think for me, it was uh, something for me, hospitality has always been something that has been uh, one of the most impactful things. So my first uh, my first role with Anatos was actually hospitality. So I was, as you know, I was hosting everybody who came over to visit us at the distillery. And for me, the the satisfaction of uh, having all these people over and seeing their reactions and seeing how happy they were when you had a really good experience to offer. For me, that's something that I always uh, loved. And so when I moved on to my second role and final role in, in Panori Card so far, it, uh, it changed a bit. I think I learned a lot more on the corporate side and I did all my spreadsheets on my computer all day and it was <laughs> it was really different than I was uh, what I was doing before which was great because I think I needed a, a break also from all the fun um yeah it was it was the most fun sometimes uh so it was a good change it was really great to move to Mexico City as well that was uh really good for just opening my mind to a lot of things and uh learning about more of a uh, corporate world and and since I always had this thing in the back of my mind where I knew I wanted to create some of my own, I just figured that it was it was a good time. Although I hadn't been in Mexico City for too long, it was only about 18 months. Uh, but I felt like it was the right time. And, and more than anything, I felt like we found a right uh, location for the bar because I knew I wanted to make this place. But until we found this specific spot in which Matilde is, is the name of the bar, in which Matilde is now, I feel like that was the thing that triggered the whole thing because if I hadn't found a really great place I might still be in in Mexico City now but uh everything happens for a reason so 100%. I guess for me it was just I saw the opportunity and and uh I thought you know you have to take it and yeah like I, I'm totally with you and I think it's a super important topic also we are moving right now especially for a lot of parents seeing their kids like working in the alcohol industry mostly starting as a bartender or like a bar owner as we both are nowadays yeah. mm -hmm. and 
Yeah, you know, I already mentioned that, that I did an apprenticeship as an industrial mechanic and I worked in the quality department as well in a, in a very known company where I got a secure job. I got a lot of options to step up massively. And, you know, still I can say I did the very right thing as I decided to become a bartender and which for obvious reason got a lot of resi resistance from my family in the first run. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and nowadays... Mm -hmm it's getting more and more uh, accepted, you know, like luckily for me, I was in a lot of magazines in the television whatsoever. And then my parents started or my family started accepting it and they got really proud. But, you know, I would like to know how did you face this situation? You know, like how did it feel for you as a father? I mean, like from the bottom of my heart, I can tell you I, I was in the bar and I'm really, really proud because I know Matilda, I did the guest bartending there as well. And I know for sure I have visited a lot of bars in my life. And I think you guys are definitely in the, within the best bars of Latin America already. And to pulling that off within the awesome. pandemic situation, I think really congratulations. But how was that for you? <laughs> It's just to see <laughs> your son opening a bar, you know? Well, you know, um, he actually wanted to to do something like that since he got out of university. And being a father, I gave him advice. You know, that's what we do. Right. <laughs> But I told him, first, get some experience working for, you know, an established company. So you learn some disciplines, you get exposure. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a really fortunate that uh, uh, Omeka Artos uh, uh, offer him an opportunity for doing the hospitality um, uh, activities and then uh, the corporate uh, administration activities, which all kind of enrich his knowledge. And then when he said, okay, I've done that for a few years, I think it was four or five, but I still want to do my own thing. And uh, I said, it's, you're right, you're ready, it's time. And uh, I was very supportive. I'm very proud because when he he was ready to start, it was uh, March of 2020 when the world came to a halt. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the next few months were so difficult, so stressful for everyone, for businesses that were already established. And he was trying to start one. Uh, really challenging, but I'm very proud that he stuck with it and he struggled and uh, didn't give up. And I think uh, he's pulled it off very nicely. Uh, very, very proud of what has been achieved so far. Uh, the place looks great, and uh, everybody wants to be there. <laughs> right, right. But it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> I, I think that's the way to go, really. And a lot of bartender <laughs> might listen to that very carefully. Uh, like, Chuy, what advice would you give others who might be in the same situation? You know, like, um, or some who are maybe struggling with the stamp their parents want them to be. Let's say someone has parents who are like lawyers, bankers, politicians mm -hmm. or whatsoever. And, you know, they want to become a bartender or a bar owner. And it's socially <laughs> not on the same level. For me, even, mm -hmm. to be honest, it's, it's a better job because it brought me to over 80 countries so far. And there will be a lot of more. But yeah, yeah I mean, what, what's your uh, take on that or advice? I mean, I think that you really need to um, think about what you want to do, I guess, in, in your life and in the long run, because, I mean, there's many people who, uh, I don't know, being a lawyer is something that makes them happy or, or being an accountant is something that makes them happy. And I truly believe there's many ways of, of being happy, I suppose. Is, I guess the first question you need to ask yourself is, what do you want to do? And if, if hospitality or, or making tequila is, is what, uh, you know, you feel is right, then you should, you know, try to do all that you can to make sure that you do what you love because um, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you spend what, like 80% of your life working. Um, and if you don't like what you do, then it's just gonna be, it's gonna feel like it's much more than that. So um, for me, the change of, of going from corporate to what I do now is, is something that I really enjoy. Not so much all the time, but I, I really like, <laughs> I really like waking up in the morning and not knowing exactly what's going to happen or what I need to do or, or what problem is going to present itself the next day. Um, right. That can be a bit, a bit stressful uh, in different ways than corporate was stressful. So you just have to deal with 
different things that come at you and, and just, uh, I don't know, take it day by day and understand that, um, you know, you're, you're doing what you love. So, I mean, there is problems, there always will be, but uh, you just need to remember that you're doing this because you really like it and uh, that at the end, it all will be worth it. Yeah. 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 I love it. No. And what your father also said, like, I think it's the greatest gift a, a parent can give their children is, you know, their, their own happiness, I would say. So, yeah. Yeah. Children should never fear their own decision, you know, um, because happiness is the key word, as you, you say as well. And the most important thing, thing in life, I, I, I would definitely say. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, parents often compare their children with, with others and we shame ourselves or other parents and we shouldn't judge at all because, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> I'm, I say that as an example myself and yeah, or it's the same with, with, with school. Like, you know, I was just an average student and not because I was stupid. I was just not interested in the most of the topics. But the first time I stepped behind the bar, It was actually at the military. I was serving as an uh, orderly. I knew this is going to be something I, I love and I want to do for the rest of my life. Maybe not behind the bar, but maybe as a bar owner, as a representative. And as you said, really do and believe in what you do. And yeah, now I'm, I'm also representing one of the most noble spirits in the world. And for me, one of the best brands, which I'm very proud of. And I mean, the same with, with, with you, you started it with it. Now you have your own uh, brand and your own legacy. And that definitely should be one of the lessons for everyone um, listening to that, that you should believe in your dreams, you know, and start yeah. doing what makes you happy, as you say. Yeah, and... do what makes you happy. And, uh, <clears throat> and just remember that, you know, especially when you try to open your own uh, bar or your own business, uh, You think it's going to be hard and then it's going to be 10 times as hard. So just be ready for that. <laughs> I, love that. I love it. No, I definitely love it because everyone watching this, it's so true. Success does not happen from zero, you know, <laughs> just yeah. be because you can pour a great uh, gin and tonic. It doesn't mean that you nail all aspects of running a, a known venue, you know, the financial aspect, the, the right team. You obviously you push the, the, the right buttons. Like I, I've seen your team. It's amazing to see the smiles and the, the special chemistry. It's amazing. But I, I also think a super important thing is to break out of the, the payroll, you know, of the parents. If you really want your own life, otherwise you have to take their decisions and their, their advices as well. So this is like kind of the, the bridge part in this phasing. Um, yeah. yeah, but I think it's, it's really the way to go, you guys um lay it out like you you trust in your your son asus and he, i think he's paying back with with his success right so <laughs> no definitely uh, well, it's uh it's been a it's been a difficult ride but i feel like uh it's paying off and it uh yeah you know it was it's a it's a combination of things you know my dad's support was obviously key and uh and not just in I mean, in every way, really, it's just uh, having somebody, you know, behind you. I, I, um, I ask him so many things. He's my dad's never run a bar, but he knows a lot about inventory. He knows a lot about finance. He knows a lot about uh, all these things that I've, uh, you know, I, I can't learn at my early right. age. So you know, it's like having him as a consultant because I really use him as that. <laughs> having him as a consultant Love is Love one of the greatest things I, I can still get from him. You know, it's uh, it's really good. And I mean, also, yeah, he's one of the most charismatic human beings I know, really. Thanks for that and, and cheers. <laughs> and which brings me to another question, which is kind of health related, you know, I got actually for both of you, which is like, what trick do you guys have to stay forever young? Because like, truly, it looks like that you guys are never aging. You always have a smile. Uh, what is it? Is it like a sneaky tequila in the morning? Is it the Mexican food? <laughs> the Aranda's air? Like, what is it? I need to know that secret. Like, you can tell me also off camera if it's like that big of a secret. But no, what is it? <laughs> uh, I mean, what do you think? All right. Well, well for me, it's uh, taking care of yourself. I mean, be kind to yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, choose uh, wisely what you eat and what you drink, how much, uh, staying active, staying busy, uh, always always uh, try to learn something new every day, 
uh, and for me that's saying something. I'm 64 already and, and close to 65. Uh, for me, learning learning something new every day is important. Uh, you know, of course, just just taking care of yourself and staying active, staying busy. I like doing physical things and learning something, right. new traits and so on. So for me, that that keeps me positive and uh, interested. So like you. I don't know. I feel like some people might say you look younger than you are, but for me, it feels like most people think I'm older. Maybe not because of physical, but uh, I get a lot that people who I meet uh, guess that I'm older than I really am. Uh, I don't know if it's a way I come across to some people or or a personality or something, but for me, it's uh, <laughs> it's actually a lot of people think that me and Abram, my partner, yeah. uh, he, they, they think we're the same age and he is 35. Uh, I'm right. going to be this year, so it's a little bit of a difference, but everybody thinks we're about the same age. So I don't know how to feel about that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, what what Dad said makes sense. Is uh, you know, stay active. Uh, mental health is is probably one of the biggest, um, probably one of the biggest things that you could you should think of, and uh, being physically active is is definitely a part of that. For me, it's I don't know for some reason for me it's uh, cleaning things. So I like to wash my car. Instead right. I know that kind of helps just kind of balance things in my head. Uh, cleaning the house, cleaning the bar, even you know, cleaning whatever I can clean is just kind of mentally giving me some some stability. Uh, that works for me. I mean, that that might not be the case for everybody, but uh, uh, just always uh, have somebody close that you can talk to about you know all kinds of problems that you might have, whatever you're going through, and things like that. Uh, yeah, and also just you know moderating what you eat and what you drink. Um, I don't know. Yeah, combination of things. Uh, you know, as long as you feel good, most likely it's because you're okay. Um, so, you know, if you physically feel okay when you wake up in the morning, it's a good sign. If you feel with energy, it's it's a good sign as well. And if you feel uh, positive, then if you feel like you, um, you know, you have good vibes going on in general, I think it's, it's you know, what you want to look for. So, Whatever feels right for me, I, I, I guess that's what I go for. Hundred percent. Yeah, no, totally agree. And it's not always, of course, when you were in the position with with the hospitality, <laughs> you had probably <laughs> more uh, hours night <laughs> night time than daytime. You were probably drinking a bit more. It's the same with me on the position when I'm traveling. I mean, at the moment we are not allowed to do it uh, physically but it will come back. And of course, a lot of bartenders always ask me, ah, how do you do it that you are still stay fit? And it's, of course, you, you need to take your times off. And for me, this is the number one rule that, that you set yourself, like reload, regain your energy, do a lot of sport, su surround your, yourself with very good people, good human beings, which give you good advice. And this is, I think, very, very important and which can be a problem in the alcohol industry as well that you get forced to drink and but i think it's easier to say no than than we think because once you you have this image and you say no i don't need um which <laughs> Jesus, uh senior i never seen you like uh, getting drunk or which which you mentioned as well like do you have like a what is your rule? How do you do it? Because I know, I mean, when you were, have been young, have you had times like where you were going <laughs> to, how should I say, like the, the glass was too full, you know, like <laughs> what happens? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, very, very few times it happened and it happened uh, when I was much, much younger. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I haven't, uh, I don't think I've ever done it. Uh, for the last 35, 40 years. Right, right. Um, it, it just, I have like a, like a autopilot uh, after probably the third drink, if I ever get to the third drink, um, my body says, that's enough. <laughs> and, I, and I feel it and I hear it and I just slow down and start drinking some water, eating some food, and then just, uh, Still socialize, but not not in an intense, heavy way. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so I, I kind of moderate myself. Yeah, my body just gives me signs and I listen to it. Yeah, that, that, that's great. That's great. And if you cannot or if you're listening to your, the, the signs of your body, I have another advice like 
from uh, another good friend of us, uh, Dre Maso, what he's doing sometimes, you know. So you're in the middle of the party and suddenly Dre is gone and everyone is like, where's Dre? And next day you That's see him, hey, if I would tell it. any one of you guys that I'm leaving, you know, I would not leave. So this is like <laughs> an advice if you yeah, feel like, okay, I don't want to handle like all the, the pressure, then yeah, you do. That's a good strategy, Dre. man. Yeah, it's a very good strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dre, Dre can, yeah, Dre could do, uh, we call it the bomba de humo, so just exactly. smoke bomb and it's, he's, he's gone. You know, where's Dre? Yeah. Oh, he must have gone to sleep. Yeah. Exactly. It's a great yeah. advice. And <laughs> well, what, what, another question I got to you when we talk about drinking, um, what's your guys' favorite cocktails, actually? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Well, you know, for me, uh, you know, you know Panchito, right? Yes. Panchito, yeah. The crafted paloma he makes is my favorite. <laughs> nice. Very simple, very refreshing. I really enjoy it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, he's a uh, great guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. For me, I mean, paloma is obviously a really great choice. Uh, I'm not sure if it's classified as an actual cocktail, but I really like to have uh, tequilita with sangrita on the side. Housemade sangrita for me that's nice. that's really good and it's a great way to chase your tequila if you want to call it like that but for me it's more like pairing um so just having that during uh, during a lunch is just really good uh very traditional typical in mexico so for me it's and it's also i really like to ask for that because it's also a great way of knowing whether the restaurant or bar you're at actually knows what they're doing because a sangrita isn't super complicated but it's uh but it's something that should be a really good recipe if you want to if you're doing things right so i guess for me that's one of the that's one of the top cocktails i guess right 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 yeah i i would classify it as a as a cocktail yeah i mean it's a chaser with the tequila on the like the but it is actually i'm one of the best i had was in in minsk With, with the guys uh, from El Pushka, yeah. actually. Yeah, they did like a really good, and I uh, I couldn't say no, and they were like loading me up, and I, I, I had a really great night there. So yeah. I have to say, they did a very good job, Misha. <laughs> and uh, you guys know, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember him. I haven't and been here. I haven't been, they, they've been here. Uh, they've yes, been, exactly. I think two times been, Misha has, has been here, yeah. And, and do you know also how to do a, a, a cocktail? For me? Um, mm -hmm. Both of you, yeah. Like, I, I, I would like <laughs> to know. <laughs> so next time I, I come, I want... <laughs> I'm asking you kindly to prepare one for me. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I'd love to. I don't know. Can you make a cocktail? Well, you know, you know what? I, I uh, ventured into cooking and practicing different recipes, oh, yeah. but... Not so much in cocktails. Right. Uh, right. Uh, I mean, I, I, I prepare top drinks for myself, uh, but very simple. Uh, maximum two or three ingredients. Uh, it usually involves uh, lemon or lime. Right. Uh, very, very slight sweetness into it. So, no, I, I, I can't say I have been practicing much on the cocktails. I enjoy drinking them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, simplicity is the key, right? And I mean, you what, what you created, and and it's it's almost a shame to mix it with some uh, ingredients. Even you can do quite amazing cocktails with it, oh. and it was actually the in, intended to make a, a tequila, which is on the price level, so you can drink it neat and you can mix it. And I think you guys did an amazing job and on doing that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also another question I, I, I wrote down for you guys, like you guys are always incredibly humble, you know, I never heard any of you guys cursing. Like, is there any moment that you guys get angry or like, I never seen any of you angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we can both speak for one another when we say we, we can get angry sometimes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, Yeah, I mean, I, for me, it's, it's uh, I guess we kind of resemble each other in, in the sense that we, um, I guess we're very cold in the sense of, you know, we can control our emotions pretty easily. And, uh, and it takes a lot, I guess, at least for, yeah, for the both of us to, to kind of get really, really angry. And, uh, 
I don't know. For me, I, when I was young, I mean, and, and he can tell you it's true. When I was younger, I, I, I could say I even had an anger issue because I was constantly getting angry at a lot of people for really just really simple reasons and, and, and it got me in a, into a lot of trouble in school right um and so for some reason I don't know after like when I was like 12 or 13 I just kind of realized that it didn't make sense to get angry all the time for just right. nonsense and uh, I don't know for some reason something changed and so nowadays it really takes a lot I can't remember the last time I was really angry at somebody enough to yell or curse or things like that it just it doesn't really happen yeah <laughs> As you yeah, mentioned. For, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, for me, it's um, I, it would just just getting uh, explosive is just not me. Uh, I, I, I definitely get disappointed. Uh, yeah, frustrated, absolutely. But it doesn't help, help any situation if you explode and, and get out of control. So for me, uh, staying in control is important uh, to kind of diffuse situations and avoid more difficult uh, situations. So uh, um, I also believe that uh, being positive kind of kind of bounces back. If, if you kind of like smile in good mood, you're respectful, you get that back. I think it's a lot easier to uh, interact with people. And uh, of course, it's more pleasant uh, to be, in, you know, friendly and civil with people. It's a lot more pleasant than than uh, uh, being controversial. So uh, it's important for me uh, to. I mean, I I always say that everybody needs a friend, and nobody needs an enemy. No one. Love it. Yeah. So making enemies is not my style. I don't want any. No, it's <laughs> so true. I never have enough. <laughs> And I think I, I cannot imagine even how you could possibly have an, an, an enemy. I mean, there must be a lot of uh, maybe distillers who, are, who envy you because you, are, you did an amazing job. And, but still, I think it's, not, uh, it's never be an enemy because, you know, even oh. other distillers, they talk like highly about you. I mean, you know, actually, you know what I wanted to show you as well, what I have with me. Do you know that? Wow. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, it is like it's I just got it yeah. on my last trip. So this is gonna hang inside my bar behind me, you know, in honor of of you. And it says said on the envelope, one of the finest tequila distillers in the world. And it's so true. So this is gonna come into wow. our bar to honor you. And you know, a lot of uh, Altos yeah. tequila is, is consumed nowadays in our bar, like our guests they come and they say hey i want uh, tequila which was not the case at all first in the first term everyone was like tequila no you know it's like a club drink whatsoever and so it makes me really proud to see that i'm part of a of an educational process so this is going to be there <laughs> who, who made that um, those paid back probably uh 10 or 11 years when they made it. Yeah, I think, I think Jorge Fitz, he uh, right. told me that he was part of the, the creating yeah. process or he chose the, it says Pau Masiques. So yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a proud moment and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang it. I was waiting until we have this session here to, to uh, let you know nice. that you're gonna hang. And one day <laughs> you, of course, the young generation, we will have a, a and art maybe as well in our bars <laughs> from ourselves <laughs> yes that'd be great man that looks awesome so no amazing Th thank you so much guys for for having you here i have a, one last question maybe uh for you both what do you guys think will the the new new look like you know especially for the bar industry for the tequila industry after the the pandemic situation will be over you know it's a tricky question i know but yeah Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully once this is all over, uh, Matilde, my bar will, will continue, obviously. And, uh, and if it continues to go as well, to go well, um, I really like, I really like Mexico as a country. So I feel like if I am to open other venues, it might be in the same, within, within the same country, uh, probably not too far away because I do like to travel, but, uh, I also like to stay close to home. So uh don't know i mean i see myself opening maybe another location at some point uh 
I want to obviously stay as close to uh, tequila more than the bar industry. Uh, I don't know, for me, tequila is always something very special. And uh, Altos is obviously the brand that got me to where I am now. So I just want to stay close to the family and uh, hopefully new projects will arise soon in which I can collaborate a bit more uh, with Altos when all this starts to get back moving. So for me, it's uh, doing more of what I'm already doing, I guess, and uh, traveling a bit more, hopefully. And and uh, I really hope to see a live concert soon again, because I feel like <laughs> right, <laughs> <wants right>. really... <laughs> but uh, right. yeah, that's that's kind of what I feel. Yeah. Yeah. One, one of the things I missed a lot is uh, meeting people that uh, come to, to visit and uh, be able to interact with them and show how we make tequila. Uh, I miss that. So uh, I'm hoping that before the end of this year uh, that that comes back and uh, people are able to travel and come and visit us. Uh, and never know, maybe in a year or two, uh, I may be doing a little traveling, not a lot. His bones are getting old, so <laughs> you know, me casa is two casa. This <laughs> this is for both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. you. So um, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to uh, people being able to travel and uh, to be able to host and show how we make it. Yeah, that'd be great. Right, right. Whose guitar is that in the back, by the way? Is that who is, oh, whose guitar uh, is that? That's mine. I haven't played in, in years. Um, right. We used to play together when I was younger. Um, yeah. yeah, I really love music and he, uh, he played professionally actually. Um, so I haven't played in a while, but I've thought about it. Uh, and I don't know, it's always, um, it's always good to pick up habits like that that you used to have. Uh, so I feel like I have it there just in case. So I don't forget that I can play guitar at some point. So um, yeah. And, don't really pay much attention to it, but uh, this is my childhood right. room. So this nice, is where nice. I, my parents' nice. house. So, um, so this is where I keep my uh, my stuff sometimes. Okay, right. so nice. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and you're singing, right, Isus? Uh, well, you I, know, I, I I consider myself more of a musician, right? Uh, I, I did some singing, uh, you know, for uh, your backup and stuff like that. I don't have a great voice. No, uh, you have. I, I, I've seen this video on uh, YouTube, like lately even, and I could sense <laughs> like you have the energy which I could dream of. And my father, he, he, he plays in a band as well. And I have nothing what he got like from singing. If I would be very happy if I have it. And I think you have it as well. Like from the outside perspective, I, I think you have a very, very good voice. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, I, 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 uh... There was a period of time when I kind of did the crazy thing, you know, and uh, uh, my parents were very supportive. I, I was a full-time musician for a while. Nice. Uh, in fact, I was able to manage uh, getting myself through school by playing at night, uh, six nights a week in wow. clubs and things like that. So I did that um, full out and got it out of my system. And I'm glad I did it. And I'm glad I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy, I enjoy uh, playing the guitar, the acoustic guitar a little bit, uh, although on and off, I do that. Right. Like and singing me. a little bit. <laughs> you, play, you play instruments too, right, Tom? I played also like the, the flute when I was very young. I don't know how to play it anymore because it was, I stopped it. But the guitar, I still know how to play like the, the main chords, but I, I used to play the notes and I, I forgot it. I mean, I, w I might would get back to it if I'm if I start practicing, but you know how it is as a as a bar owner, then I'm the the co-owner of a, a event of an amazing event company, then doing the 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 brand ambassador job with Altos. Yeah, it's it's Still, it's a lot of things. So then I want to improve my mi español, no? So it's it's hard. So I want to step by step. It's I'm not going to be a professional, never. <laughs> but it's great to have like a, a a thing. Sometimes if you have a guitar at home and you play some chords, I think it's something we we should do and not only focus on one thing. So we can break out and control our emotions, balance, juggle it off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no great 
Yes, is thank you very much, Simon. Uh, great, uh, great, always, always uh, talking to you, even though it's it's through through the internet. It's through the but, internet uh, in a room. Time, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I hope next time, I mean, to to, to uh, meet in person. Yeah. Exactly. Like I, I miss the the one and one tasting sessions yeah. with you, which are yeah, always yeah. so great, and I, I learn always a lot. And yeah, I mean, you helped. <laughs> a lot creating an amazing tequila and as well doing it environmentally friendly, sustainable. Uh, yeah, definitely you're one of my heroes and I'm, I'm forever thankful that I can call both of you actually true, true friends, you know, and mm -hmm. I wish not both of you nothing but the best. And as I already mentioned, if you come to Germany, please be my guest and everyone listening to that, make sure if you're in Mexico, if you're in Guadalajara, Uh, check out Matilde Mi Amor, an amazing bar, 100%. They, they will show you what Mexican hospitality is all about. And, and then if you have not tried it yet, then, then make sure to try <laughs> this amazing tequila, which uh, has the name of, of the legend here on it. <laughs> and yeah, like, what can I say? I truly, I hope that everything goes well and we, we, we guys can see each other soon and everyone has listened carefully to what they these both legends told us about like parenting if you chase your dreams they will come true and yeah i can't wait to see you guys soon also if you haven't you, you guys can su subscribe to the tahona society web page where you find a lot of great articles all around agave also different health issues Uh, and yeah, feel free to text any of us. Like we are, we are happy to answer all questions uh, around tequila, bartending. Yeah. A any other <laughs> questions of you guys? Uh, no, I don't know. I uh, just I want to say thank you so much for, uh, for hosting us and for uh, getting us together. This is really fun and really nice. Uh, congratulations on, on uh, you being able to open your bar again soon. I'm sure that you'll be really successful as well. I haven't been there, but I already know it's a great place. And uh, I hope that, you know, once we can travel again, uh, we see each other there soon and we share some tequila, man. Definitely. You, you, you both can pass by for a guest bartending, even if it's just one drink each of you guys going to do. <laughs> I'm looking very <laughs> forward to that. <laughs> and I'm raising I'll my glass. sodas for everybody. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Salud. 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 Thank you so Thank much, you, guys. Salud.